you and I have never met in person, but I know as soon as we see each other, it's like we've met, I mean, we've known each other forever. Welcome to the Agent Growth Lab podcast, the show that's all about taking control of your success. If you're a realtor, financial planner, business owner, or anyone who's ready to grow your business, you're in the right place. Join your host, April Russell, each week as she jumps into the lab to find out what professionals are doing to master their success. So let's get started with this week's episode of Agent Growth Lab podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Agent Growth Lab podcast. I'm your host, April Russell, and joining me today is Ginger Bell of Edu Marketing. She is absolutely phenomenal, and I'm really excited that she is joining me today. So Ginger, introduce yourself to our amazing audience. Awesome. Thank you, April. I am so excited to be here. And hello, everyone. If you're watching us on video, a big hello. If you're listening to us, hello to you as well. Uh, Of course, if you're listening, hop over to YouTube because that way you can see us. And that's always better to be able to have an idea as far as someone, what someone looks like. And, you know, that's important to me because that's one of the things that I do, April, as you know, is a lot of video production, podcast production, things like that. So being on video is very important. Yeah. So tell us more about that, Ginger. How did you get into helping professionals with video? Well, I have. (laughs) It's like, how much time do we have? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, I have been using video in my business for probably, I would say, since GoToWebinar got started back in 2007, 2008. And, you know, I do, I, at the time I was doing a lot of work in the uh, mortgage and real estate industries. And there was a lot of regulations that were going on at the time. And I'm a content producer. So I create educational content. That's what I've been doing for the past 20 years. And so there were so many regulations and we had to get the information out. And so, you know, it was a matter of how we're going to do that. And at the time webinars were new. So we started doing webinars and then we had um, the requirements of continuing education and with the mortgage meltdown, nobody was traveling to do their continuing education. And so we started doing it online. And that's really where I started getting into video. And I can tell you the first class that I recorded, we didn't have phones. We, we didn't have you know all the fancy stuff we have today. No Zoom, nothing like that. I had a videographer and I put all of my notes for the course onto PowerPoint to where I would honestly just read all the notes and then hit next and then read all the notes. And and then he would record the video. But here's what's so funny, April, and this is why video is so powerful, is the the continuing education classes I did were across the country. And so when I would travel and speak, people would recognize me because they had attended one of the classes. And what's funny is when we were setting up the first class that we videotaped, there was a table sitting next to me and it was empty. And so my videographer said, oh, I'm gonna put something on the table. And he had a goldfish in his office. So he put the goldfish on there and we didn't even think about it. But so many people would come up to me and say, hey, it's so nice to see you. You know, I loved your class. Hey, what's the goldfish's name? And I'm like, what's the goldfish? What are you talking about? And then I remembered, (laughs) here we had put this goldfish on the table next to me when I was recording. It was eight hours of continuing education. So these poor people watched eight hours of this fish (laughs) swimming around. I didn't know the whole fish's name, but my videographer's name was Nate. So I named the goldfish Nate. Oh, that's Nate. But, you know, I mean, that's what people, people remember those things. And so doing video and especially, you know, I know a lot of your audience is real estate agents and having that connection on video is so, so powerful, so important. Absolutely. And I think it helps to build a relationship. Even when you think about social media, 
and posting video content, it allows people to feel like they know you even when they don't know you really. Exactly. You just feel that connection to them by being able to see them. So, and that's why I hope our listening audience is watching on YouTube as well uh, right. <laughs> so that they can connect with us. But there's so much power in video and there's so many ways you can actually really truly reach people by by just recording video. And I would say to any agent right now or anyone, any professional, whether you're a CPA, a realtor, a mortgage loan officer, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to adapt to video. It's very important and people need to connect. We People need connection and yeah. video is definitely a way to do it. Yeah, you know, it's, I think probably the, one of the main reasons people don't do it, April, is because they're afraid of it. And one of the best things to do if you've never done video before is to honestly just take your phone and just record for 30 seconds every day just a video. You don't even need to send it anywhere, but just get used to, you know, that conversation, get used to seeing yourself, how you need to, you know, what's the best lighting, what's the best sound, you know, all of those things. If you do that for 30 days, so 30 seconds every day for 30 days, you will get used to doing video. So it's just making those little changes. And you're right, video makes that connection. I mean, you and I have never met in person, but I know as soon as we see each other, it's like we've met. I mean, we've known each other forever. And that's, that's what it what feels like. Does. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it feels it's like. It's one of those things. I just did a workshop last week in Orlando and uh, was invited by someone who I've known for a very long time, many, many years, and we'd never met in person. And so he invited me. I did a, a workshop for his team. And as soon as he walked in, and it's funny because I was honestly streaming a live podcast, my my podcast, I stream live. And so I was streaming it when he walked in and I had to stand up and give him a hug. And it was like, I'd known him forever. And he and I both said that we we're talking at dinner and it's like, my gosh, we just met for the first time face to face. But because we've done so much on video and he and I, you know, have been on podcasts together and different, you know, video conferences together through COVID. And so it just creates that. And that's what real estate agents can have that connection as well. And, and sometimes, you know, hard to come up with ideas for video, but real estate, my gosh, there's so many things you can do about real estate. In fact, one of the best things I honestly think people can do right now, because the, the real estate market, you know, it's it's been a challenge. You know, we're short on inventory. You know, I mean, obviously rates, we've seen a change in that. Hopefully that's beginning to lighten up a little bit. But the inventory is going to continue to be there. But you still have to be out there. And you can't keep talking about a lack of inventory or, you know, building. I mean, it's like different things you can talk about. One of the best things you can do, and and this is what I would do like tomorrow. If you haven't started this, I would start this tomorrow. I would start a Facebook group and wherever you're at um, and, and you're in South Carolina. So you could do it in your city. You could do it some, you know, some, a bigger area, you could do a smaller area, but I would start just a Facebook group or a Facebook page, you know, business Facebook pages are, they really don't do a lot, but you have to have them. Right. But if you started a Facebook page, what city do you live in? So I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, so you're in Raleigh. So you could start a Facebook group that would be, you know, um, l love my Raleigh community. I mean, name it whatever, you know, Raleigh rocks. I mean, name the Facebook page something just like you would your business page. And then go out and have your phone. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know, I've got... I've been recording video today. This is honestly just a $20. And if you're not watching on video, you're going to have to have a video because I'm showing it. It's a $20 stand. I like it because it honestly has, so it has, I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't. It has lights in it. So it has the little lights on the side. You can just put your phone on there. Go out to some local businesses, you know, walk into the local pizza shop walk into the dry cleaners, walk into the local coffee. And I'm talking local places. I'm not talking your big national chains. I'm talking 
those com the community that is part of your community and say, hey, you know what? I have a, a Facebook group. We're really showcasing local uh, business owners in the area. Would love to sit down and, you know, just do a little video interview with you. Do you think anybody's going to say no? I mean, yeah. why would they say no, right? Yeah. And what you're doing, and especially as a real estate agent, you're showcasing your community. And then if you have an open house, then guess what? Showcase your open house. You can show, you know, talk about school. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do, but that's what I would do right now. And just really get to be known in the community. And if you go, like, if you do this consistently and you go back to those businesses and you say, hey, you know, let's do another video. Guess what? They know people who are wanting to buy, wanting to sell. I've seen this happen then where it's like, I mean, and you did this with your book where you had uh, you had it at a wine bar. That'd be a great place to go into. And, you know, just I mean, you could even start a page that says, you know, Wines of Raleigh <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and showcase that. I mean, there's so many things you could do. But then when you want to come back and have an event there, guess what? You're supporting them. They're going to support you, too. So those are the things. And you could do that. They could have you come in. You could talk about, you know, mortgages. You could have a, a CPA come in and talk about, you know, taxes. I mean, taxes are obviously coming up again this year, like they do every year. So, I mean, just all of those kind of things. Right. Absolutely. And I must say, posting at the local wine bar definitely has paid off for me. Um, I did, of course, my book signing was there. I I'm hosting ha monthly happy hours there. I've done a home buyer seminar there and they were still open for business. So there were people, strangers coming in, but Hey, grabbing my information. They were attentive. They were listening. They're sipping wine, enjoying dessert. It, it was a great day. It was a Saturday afternoon, beautiful day out. It, it was great. So yeah. Definitely, you know, utilize your actual local businesses, as you said. I think that's a great way to be a source of information. And of course, you know, that whole giver's gain, you're actually giving something to that business as well. You're giving them exposure, right. but also to, to your benefit and to your audience's benefit as well. Yeah. So I think that's always something that needs to always any profession that you're in, that needs to be at the forefront of your mind. What are you giving? What is a value that you have that you can provide? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and giving is so important because if you have that mindset to where you are giving, it will always come back to you. You know, it's, it's that Murphy's law, yin and yang, all of that, that it will come back to you. The other thing you can do is, you know, Set your, your videos up to say, hey, are you looking to relocate to the area? You know, here's some important things that you can talk about. We had rented a house. My son brought a group of um, professional uh, esports players into Atlanta, Georgia. And the house that we had rented was um, a beautiful area. And it was in Johns Creek. And they had a million dollar dog park. That was just down the street. They had spent a million dollars <laughs> on this dog park, but it was award winning. And it was one of those things. It's like if I was in that area, if I was a real estate agent in that area, I would showcase that. I would go in there and I would record the different dogs that come in there. <laughs> it's like you can start a whole thing on there. Look for things that are stand out in your neighborhood that that really you know make a list if if they've made a list somewhere it's like the best burger places in North Carolina I mean all those kind of things those are the kind of things you can do videos about so it doesn't just have to be about real estate and oftentimes and you may see this too I know I certainly see this you know I I put to post a lot on my social media and sometimes it's video sometimes it's information sometimes it's a blog post but you know what usually gets me the most engagement is just a picture of me or me and my family. I mean, it's like the it's the personal side of it that people people really gravitate to and they appreciate. So yeah. you can't just have those explainer videos or those static little, hey, I have a new property. It's like you 
it, it's you. I mean, it truly mm -hmm. is you. And so making yeah. that connection is so important. And then having that engagement too. So anything you're doing on social media, um, if people are making comments, you need to respond to their comments. You need to like their comments. And I equate it to, I was talking to someone just the other day about this because they had good content on social media, but they weren't responding to their comments. They didn't have good engagement. And so I said, you know what, if you walked into a cocktail party and someone walked up to you and said, hey, that's a nice dress, you wouldn't turn around and walk away. You yeah. would say thank you. Yeah. And you would probably have an you know, engaged conversation. And so it's the same thing on social media, but we kind of tend to, to forget because it's not right in front of us. Right. So having that engagement is very important too. Absolutely. I attended a class for social media and it was in person. And the uh, facilitator of the class, she actually demonstrated what we do on social media. And she goes, oh, as you just mentioned, that's a really nice dress. Like she was doing all the things, but she wasn't talking. And she's like, that's exactly what you're doing on social media. You're just giving a heart and someone liked your outfit or someone, you know, inquired about something and you're, thumbs up, you know, yeah, really, <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> so like you said, if we walked around, you know, in life, the way we do on social, oh sure. my goodness. <laughs> So that's why it's important to be engaging, but that sticks with me when I'm on social media and I'm like, April, make a true comment, right. say, yeah, respond, say something and yeah. don't just give hearts. <laughs> yeah, because people and people take the time to make a comment. So Absolutely. and so there's and times it's growing. like birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. But people took time to make that comment. And so, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Somebody walks up and says, you know, happy birthday. You don't go. I mean, so we forget and it's important to have that. And especially if you're using social media for any kind of sales, it's very important to have that. Yeah. And sometimes maybe you have the not so nice people in social media. And, you know, when we are in a profession that we are, sometimes you do get comments and that's okay. There is a time to engage. There's a time not to engage, um, but that's a little bit different. And we don't see that very often, um, but you can see that. So be aware of it. But for the most part, you know, show, don't, don't be afraid to show yourself, be aware of obviously being smart and, you know, being professional, you know, politics, religion, all the kind of things like that are, you know, off the table professionally, be aware of that. Um, but otherwise, it's so powerful to be able to to have that engagement and to use the social media. But I don't want people just to think about social media. You know, right now, AI is having a huge impact on what's happening on web pages, on even on LinkedIn, on your on and your Google Analytics, on your YouTube analytics. And so right now it's really important to get your information out there, not just on video, but also doing blog posts. So if you do not have a blog section on your website, get a blog section on your website. Uh, if you are not doing video and you are not on YouTube, get onto YouTube because all of those things go into your SEO. And so it's important for you to be able to have that presence. And people search for you. It's like you you may be the number one you know, producer in your area, but if somebody doesn't know you, they're going to go and they're going to search for you online. And so the more presence you can have, the better presence you can have. And it really does make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I just had a referral the other day who said he found me on Google. I'm like, yes, it's working. <laughs> Google business profile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and mean? to be searchable. You know, I, I would encourage yeah. anyone, go search your name. What happens? What comes up? Yep. You know, or search your profession. Where where are you in the list? Yeah. You know, exactly. especially for the agents, because there's so many. Where where are you for that person that's Googling to find to yep. find their real estate agent? Yeah. Well, it used to be on Google, they had their leader of the pack, which a lot of that was driven by your reviews. And so 
you know, the number of reviews you had and then the most current um, review is what Google would look at as far as its analytics to put. It was usually five in the leader of the pack and it's completely gone now. And so it is not based on that review status. What it is, I mean, and your reviews still count, but it's a little bit different now. And so having really on your website to where it has your videos and has those, um, you know, blog post articles, all those things that can add more context and more information is what Google is looking for. So it's very important to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just want to thank you so much, Ginger, for joining us today. You have dropped a lot of jewels here. <laughs> and I'm sure we have all gotten something out of everything that you have shared. But I do appreciate you for joining us. Tell people how they can reach you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm so excited about everything that you are doing, April, because you are such a giver and you have so much great information to share. So you just keep doing what you're doing. And for your listeners, if they would like to connect with me, my business is edumarketing.com. That's edumarketing.com. So education and marketing put together. I do work uh, with real estate agents, also a lot, obviously, on the mortgage side with CPAs, with financial planners. And what I do is I put a voice to your expertise. So whether you're wanting to do video, whether you're wanting to do podcasts, whether you're wanting to write a book, doing I do a lot of um, email marketing as well. I do a lot of ghostwriting. So whatever that is, if you have something that you want to use as educational marketing, then I'm the person to uh, connect with that. So thank you for that. Thank you. And once again, audience, thank you so much for joining us, joining the Agent Growth Lab podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, agentgrowthlabpodcast.com. Of course, get a copy of my book, The Growth Playbook, A Real Estate Agent's Daily Success Plan. You can uh, see how you can get a copy of that from the website as well. But once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week in the lab. That's a wrap on today's episode of the Agent Growth Lab podcast. Huge thanks to our insightful guest and to you, our dedicated listeners. If you're committed to growing your business and achieving your full potential, don't forget to subscribe and check out all the episodes at www.agentgrowthlabpodcast.com. Thanks for joining your host, April Russell. We will see you next week in the lab for another dose of inspiration and actionable advice.